So let's take a look at situations um, where we're trying to predict about a population by looking at a proportion. The percentage of people who say yes or the people, percentage of people who answer red or answer I don't know to whatever questions we may have. Um, we're going to call that value of the whole population P and we're going to take a sample, come up with a value within our sample and whatever that, sample, that value in our sample is we're going to call P hat. So P hat, remember, is a statistic. It represents our sample. Where P is a proportion which represents our, I'm sorry, a parameter which represents our population. So um, let's take a look at a situation where I'm taking simple random samples of Reese's Pieces um, uh, candy, okay? And we're going to notice, um, take a look at the percentages of the oranges that are in any particular bag. Okay, and so we're going to set it up so that either orange is 0.45 or in some situations it's 0.15. So 45% of all the candies are orange or 15% of the orange. And we're going to see what our samples look like. Okay, so here, this first picture here represents, if you notice here, it represents sample size of 25. And there are 400 samples. And this is the sampling the distribution of all of our samples. It's not every possible sampling, so it's not a sampling distribution, but it's all the samples that we did. If you notice here, we did 400 samples, okay? And if you notice here, um, this uses pi, but that's the same as p. So if you want to think of the p as being 0.45, that's what the whole population is. If you notice here, we have lots of samples, um, some as high as uh, 0.75, and some as low as almost 0.1. And we have a lot of values in between. But you, as you can see, the center of our samples is very, very close to our proportion of our population, 0.45. But there's a little bit of variability. We do have some values here that are as high as 0.6 or 0.7. And certainly some values here as below as 0.1 or 0.2. So the variability here is relatively high. We get um, some answers far away from what we would expect to get. So let's take a look at the second situation, which again deals with the um, p-value, let's call this p, remember, as being 0.45. So that means 45% of all of our bags have, 45% uh, uh, of all the colors of the bag is orange. And if you look here, this has a sample size of 50. So this is double what the previous one. And again, it's pretty much centered here. But if you notice, we don't have as many out here at the 0.6 and 0.7. And if you notice, we don't even get down to 0.1, or the other one got down to 0.1. So the variability here is a little bit less. There's still some variability. We're still getting as low as 0.23 or 0.24, and certainly as high as 0.65. But it is closer to the center. It's less variable. The standard deviation is smaller, meaning that our data is a little bit more centered. And so we're a little bit more confident there. So the sample size seems to it, it, it decrease the variability. Our data is closer when we have a bigger sample size. So let's take a look at a third situation. Now, we'll, uh, um, in this problem, the proportion of the population has been changed to 0.15. And so we've looked at different bags, and it turns out only 15% of the orange. Okay, so again, the sample size is 25. We did a sample... A number 20, 400 samples, which is not all the samples, but it certainly is a lot. And if you look here, centered is right where we expect it. But again, there's a little bit of variation. We got as high as 0.35 or so, and we got as low as zero, in fact. We actually got some samples that had no oranges in them whatsoever. So again, a little bit of the variation here is quite wide. We're not as confident about our answer for any particular sample. So then, if you take a look at this last example, if you notice here, now the sample size is 50, and again, this is where the p-value is 0.15. And notice here that while we do have some high values, they're not as numerous as the previous one. So the variation here is much lower. More of our data is in the center than it is on the edges. So this is one that has low variability. So the, the moral of the story is, is that to decrease the variability, the trick is always to increase your sample size. The more you sample, the more precise your answers are going to be. So um, in terms of sample size, more is always better, although there are limits to how much you could do. In general, more is better. So if we look at the sampling distribution of p hat, and remember the sampling distribution is all possible samples of whatever size we're looking at, all possible samples, what would that look like? In most cases, it is seems to be normal. 
um, although it does seem to be more normal as you get a bigger sample size, and the population proportion does have an effect on that. The center seems to be the center of our sample seems to be equivalent to the proportion of our population. So there is a direct relationship there, just like we saw with the means. The mean of our samples is the mean of our uh, population. And for, uh, at, for any specific value of p, the standard deviation gets smaller as n gets larger, meaning that as the sample size gets bigger, our variation gets smaller, we're more confident in our answer. Um, so p hat is always counted by counting the number of successes in the sample, in our sample. So for example, if I open up a bag of Reese's Pieces, I count the number of oranges out of the total size of the sample size. What is How many different pieces of candy were in my can um, a bag? So again, p hat is always the number of successes divided by the size of the sample size. So please add these formulas um, that I'm going to talk about here onto your uh, sampling distribution note sheet for mean of p hat and standard deviation of p hat. And basically we learned in binomial situation that the mean is n times p, meaning the number of um, events times the probability of success. And the standard deviation was given by this formula. Well, the, uh, when we look at proportions, it's basically a binomial situation. Either they answer yes or they don't. Or it's orange or it's not orange. So it's usually a binomial situation. And so we realize then that the mean of our proportion of all of our p hats, our sampling distribution, will equal to p, which is, remember, is the proportion of our population. So this is a formula that you need to copy down for the mean of p hat. So mean of p hat will actually equal p. And the standard deviation of p hat, turns out, is equal to this formula here which is p times 1 minus p divided by n and the square root of that. p being the number of people who said yes, 1 minus p meaning the number of people who said no, divided by your sample size, and the square root at the end, and the end. And so the idea here is that as the sample size increases, which means n gets better, bigger, the spread will decrease. That standard deviation will get smaller. So this is another formula you need to write down for the standard deviation of p hat. Just write down the parts that I circled. Um, you don't have to write down the intermediate steps. So to summarize about a sampling distribution of p hat, if we have a population in which there is a certain proportion that we are investigating, number of people who said yes, number of people who voted for Obama, number of orange um, candies in a Reese's Pieces cup, or Reese's Pieces candies, whatever that is, we can take a bunch of simple random samples, all of the same size, get a p hat for each one of those, make a sampling distribution, in other words, every possible sa um, sample, Make a distribution of that. And this is what the mean, the center will be, and this is the standard deviation. It tells you how far spread apart. So these two formulas help us determine the mean and standard deviation of a situation that involves p or p hat. So here's the situation in which um, we're going to use the normal approximation um, for p hat to actually answer some questions and to make an inference about a um, population. So um, one thing you need to be aware of is that our sample size does have to be big enough so that the number of successes and the number of failures have to be at both at least 10. If they're both at least 10, then the, the distribution will be approximately normal, and we can calculate mean and standard deviation to make our calculations. So keep in mind that both n times p and n times 1 minus p, n times p is the number of successes, n times 1 minus p is the number of failures, have to be both at least 10. So here's the situation that's on your notes. I'd like you to copy, take notes down uh, how to solve this problem. A polling uh, organization asks a simple random sample of 1,500 first-year college students how far away their home is from the campus. Suppose that 35% of all first-year students actually attend college within 50 miles at home. In other words, they don't go very far. What is the probability that the simple random sample of 1,500 students will give a result within two percentage points of this true value? So the 35% represents P, that is the proportion of all first-year students, 35% of them go to school close to home. They want to know that if we take a sample of 1,500 students, what is the probability that the proportion of students who live close to home is somewhere between 33 and 37%. If I'm going to be within two percentage points of 35, I can go as low as 33 or as high as 37. Anywhere in between there, that's what we're interested in. Okay, so this is the question that is on your um, note sheet, and we're going to do the four-step process. Um, I talked about earlier, state, plan, do, and conclude. 
Uh, Spanish people dance the cha-cha. Kind of a way to remember that. So state, we're going to actually state what the problem is in our own words. And so in this problem, we want to find the probability that a sample proportion falls between 0.33 and 0.37, i.e. within two percentage points of 0.35. So plan, we are going to um, uh, take an SRS of size n, and we know that the pro population proportion is 0.35 um, students who want to stay close to home. Okay, So copy down these both, both these parts for state and plan, and then I'll show you do and conclude. So for the do, we have to make sure that the number of people who live close to home and the number of people who live far away, away from home is at both at least 10. And this is not a problem because we have 1,500 people times, we know 35% of them live close to home. That's 525. And 1,500 times 65% would then be 975. So there are, both these numbers are at least 10, meaning that we can use a normal curve to approximate our answer. So that's one of the big things that you have to check, is that n times p is greater than 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than 10. And so copy down what it says here in do as part of our process. We will then use the z-score to help us determine the percentage of the data of students that would be in between these values. So um, we're going to use, use the z-score twice, once for the 33% and once for the 37%. So if you notice here, the z-score for 33% comes out negative 1.63. The z-score for 37% comes out positive 1.63. And now we need to figure out the percentage of our data that comes in between there. Um, one option also is to use the normal CDF. And we're going to do this from negative 1.63 to 1.63 with a mean of 0 0.35. And we need to get our standard deviation. To get the standard deviation, we're going to use the formula that was given to us that says the standard deviation is equal to equal to p times 1 minus p divided by n and square root that whole thing. So in this case our p is 0 0.65, 1 minus p would be 0 0.35, and our sample size is 1500, and we're going to square root that. Okay, if I grab a calculator and punch that in, I get a value that is equal to 0 0.123. So this is my standard deviation of my sample. Okay, and that's the number that I'm going to use in my z-score formula down here. So if you notice, that's the value that I get there. And so that's how I get to two z-scores of negative 1.63 and positive 1.63. So I can include this value in my normal CDF, 0 0.123, hit enter, and it will give me my percentage. So it turns out that about 90% of all simple random samples of size 1500 will give me a result within two percentage points of P, which is the truth about the population. So copy this down as part of your do and conclude. And this is a completed problem using sample proportions.